this presentation on the sickle cell epidemic. Sickle is developed by Jimmy Jolly, who is a PhD candidate in occupational logistics at Cambridge University. Jolly invented the software when he realized there was no software package on the market that could handle it. He decided to retreat to using PDFs to craft the software system. The major features of Quicken include document management, presentation, highlighting tools, and dashboard support, document syncing both to an online library and to different computers, brainstorming, an integrated web browser built on academic research, and document management. Quicken is only available currently for the Windows platform. To get started with Quicken, you need to go to the Quicken website and download the software. We go through the usual software package features. Now we're on the inside of Quicken. Let's do an overview of the main view. There's a series of buttons across the top. On the main pane, there's a list of your libraries. On the right, there's a list of your contacts and also information about new features. When you start using Quicken for the first time, you'll have a library with your username and also a guest library. You don't really need the guest library except to keep in your inbox quicker with that setting. If you want more libraries, you can use the Manage Libraries button. This takes you to the Quicker website where you can add new libraries. Why would you want to do that? Say you're doing research with two major papers, you might want a separate library for each one. Or you might want a library for your articles and you want to share a library of articles with someone else. You can set up a separate library for sharing. In fact, to say you might only ever need one library, so just start there. Now we'll open a library. Start with the library with your username and click on it to open. Let's pull the screen up we'll start at the bottom left and go clockwise. On the bottom left, we have a small record button. There's a premium version of Quicker that has some options. If you add some Quicker or Quicken features to it, it's no more than a flat $10. Still, if they bother you while you are working, you can temporarily close them so you can get some real reading done. Immediately above the ad is a section where we have tabs for items in the library and also search tabs. We'll look at this later when we have some time. Above that section, we have some sort options. If you want to browse the articles in your library, you can sort by title, authors, year, and other features. Then there's the Read Toolbar at the top. Again, if you want to see what any of these buttons are for, just hover your mouse over them to see the pop-up tab. I'll go over all of these buttons in more detail a little bit later. First, right above the toolbar, there is a tab that says Home and a tab for your library. You can have more than one library open at a time, but each will show up in a separate tab. If you want to get back to the Home page, you can click on the Home tab. The summary of the screen is pretty blank when you read it out if you have no buttons. But Quicken has some help if you need basic instructions on how to proceed. Now we'll add some documents to Quicker. There are several ways of doing this. First is the drag and drop method. Open Quicker, open a folder where your documents are, and drag and drop the documents into the library. Most of my files have really a high section of like 17311.pdf. I used to wait on changing those titles to something more useful, but I've been doing it a lot better. This could rot in a day. Another option is the Add Files button. When the file screen reappears, choose the file you want to add. If you want to add more than one file, you can hold the Control button while you click on each file. We will look at how that is done. choose an entire folder of PDF you want to add. Another option is Add from Import. If you have PDFs in Mandalay, Quotella, or EndNote, you can use this button to import them. This also offers the option of importing to a separate folder. I prefer more of a folder. You can also add a library. Say you have documents
and we can monitor it and we can help you. So we can say, well, this one was shared with me. Uh, maybe you just have more than one monitor. But here you can put two or more of them together. You can use the buttons, the import buttons from one to the library and the other. And then there is the watch folder. You can tell Clickup to watch a photo and move to the left. You can tell the folder on your computer how to move to the left. And then every time you download a PDF in the future, you can put it in there. You tell Clicker to watch that folder. Every time you open Clickup, it will ask you to check on that folder for new PDFs. And the times of which it will automatically import them into your library. Now let's start talking about the little guy special page. One of the best parts of Clickup is that it helps you organize your files without too much effort to try and redo. That means you not have to rewrite information about your files. Citations are stored in a format called binary. We refer to good files or even metadata that is data about other data. The good graphical citation is a type of metadata that is data about how the files are created, a book or article or other matter in which you want to study in the future. Now I'm now going to show you how we can use the power of good clicks to get citation information from Google Scholar into our libraries. Let's look at our library again. We've now had all of the sites, but you'll notice that each article has a title and then underneath it, it says unknown year and unknown author. That's because we haven't added all the citation information. But we are busy people. We refuse to add new citations to a library and so forth. We are going to use the good click snapper to find out the name of a good book. Let's open the good click snapper on your tablet and click on the snapper button. Let's resize this window by dragging the corners and giving ourselves a little more room at the top for articles to show up in the preview window. Now let me explain what's happening in this window. On the top, we get a preview of the article. In the bottom, Clickit is taking the title of the article and taking it into Google Scholar to find the good click information for the article. Before this tool works, we have to do one little thing. There is an ear icon in the upper right corner of this window. Click on the ear icon, then the drop down menu if you want to click on Scholar Preferences. Scroll down the page of Preferences. At the bottom of the page, there is a section called Bibliography Location. If you want to select the option that says Show Links to Import Citations, you can click there. Next, your good click is selected in the drop down menu. Once you set that down, there will always be a link that says import into good click via each article. Once you've found the right article, just click on import into good click. Notice at the bottom half of your screen, there is the good click information. We have special characters in this window for erasing any reference, but it's easy enough to read if you want to take a look at it. You'll also notice that the good click information appears in a little box in the upper right of your screen. Once you are satisfied that the information looks correct, you can click on that little arrow and continue to the next document that has good click information. Here's a little tip here. Clicker looks for the information in the biggest font on the first page of the article and puts it through the title. But sometimes that's wrong. In this example, they have put the word integrate, which is not at all helpful and is not the entire title. There's a really great feature here that helps you. If Clicker picks the wrong information for the title, you can just look at the article preview in the top of the window and highlight the title of the article. Quick will then start a new search in Google Scholar in the bottom window to find new title information. Here's another example where it's kind of using too much information for the title. Now I find that paid for articles are sometimes a problem because they provide their own cover page that doesn't have the language. Or the actual article itself is paid too. But the tips are really simple. Just drag your cursor over the title. Again, as soon as you stop dragging your cursor, Clicker will start another search in the bottom menu. If you get it wrong, don't worry. You can do it again, and it will execute another search for you. As you go along and you build up past it, it will take mere seconds and look up the good article and make sure that the title is correct. Let's go super fast. You can click on the little map icon up in front of the blue arrow. That's the good click snapper. 
the winner, your bet bet will automatically choose the first search results from the list. So you don't have to click on them. You put in the winner. Yeah, you don't have to click on them. Right, right. And if you click the wrong results, you won't worry. You can still scroll through the other results with a different article, or you can highlight different words for the bet bet.
the battery charger to go to the battery charger pad on the left column. If you hover over the bar to the correct PCC, the pad should quickly stop on. You can hold left stick to inform and know you're away from it. You can also click on the mouse button to enter a list of charging you never want to pay for. This feature is still under development, so you can ignore it if you want to. But if you have a lot of articles, it might be helpful to give it to you while you're not looking for it. Let's move on to what articles you read on tools. Finally, we've got a lot of articles in our library. Now we have to get to it. You can open an article by clicking in the title or in the PDF icon next to the article. Once you're in the article page, here's a few things to note. At the top of the page, notice we now have three tabs, one for the home screen, one for the library, and one for this article. You can skip the one you don't have if we need to move it in. Next, we have a series of buttons called Status Toolbar. You can hover over any button to see what it does. On the right, we've got the metadata, tab, a reduce button, additional information, and a comment section. On the left, there is a duplicate detections button, which will tell you if there are any duplicate copies of your article in the library. You don't want to spend all of your time in the first one, though. You might discover there's another copy because you're reading one of the previous articles. One copy at a time is enough. There is a keyword tab, the most common words in the library. The advertisement is now in the lower right, but there are many more articles with greater value. Let's go up this page and see what two others have. There is a search and report section, which will have information related to your daily search. There's a citation and your library section. Now hold on to your seats here. This is one of the reasons why we filled in all of those sections in here. Here are our monthly citations. That means that this paper cites another paper in your collection. That other paper will be listed here. There are also inbound citations. If another paper in your collection cites this paper, that other paper will be mentioned here. Now it's been a few months since you've been here, paper, so you really couldn't find the key from before. There is also an also have these authors section, which will find the other articles in your library by the same author. Finally, there is a similar papers in Google Scholar section. You group papers similar to the ones you are viewing. Think about it. This gives you a jump start on finding other articles similar to the one you already have. Let's go ahead and open Search Trends. Now let's talk about reading articles together. You grab the article in front of you, such as Start Reading, or if all of your stuff in the margins is grouped out for you, or you think the text is too small, you can click on the preview icon. That makes the article take up the full screen. When you're done with your view, you can just click on the tab yet again to go back to the regular view. Now we'll talk about tools. Let's start in the home screen view again. First, we have the home. Let's just be moving around in a second. When you use any other tool and you're done with it, you can click the home and make the other tool stop working. Next, we click the left tab icon. Let me back up for a second. You are viewing a PDF, but behind the scenes, click ahead to view possible text for recognition on your own. That means you can actually copy and paste the text of any document into your WordPress site. So I've selected text, and then I can right-click on the text and choose a bunch of different options from the menu. You can copy the selected text into a program like Word. If you just select one word or a few words, you can search the web or search your library for those words. You can look up a word in dictionary.com. You can add a term to the tag for the article. You can use the highlighted term to search for good text for the article. You can highlight a term to use like the paper title, like the author, or if you're looking at an article with more than one author, you can select other names to be added to the author section or to use text metadata. Remember to click the home tool when you are done using the selected text tool. Next is the tool for adding a box in your search document. You use this tool to add a virtual post-it note to your document, but it's even better than that. You drag the box around the text you want to annotate. You can add text in the text box. You can type on the highlighted area. Whatever you tag or type here will be searchable later. If you want more options, you click on the little information button in the lower right corner of the note. 
is that she has a box cutter that has more heads to test the annotation for the annotation report that's actually in there. And it has a rating that is even into a hierarchy. There is also a button to delete the annotation. When you're done clicking on a field, notice that the annotation box is now right here so you can move through it in the future. So I'm going to add a few more of these to the document for later use. Now on to the highlighting tool. You can click on it and drag it on your screen. If you highlight something accidentally, you can unhighlight the text at the end of the day. When you're done with the highlighter, click the paint tool to stop using the highlighter. The next tool is an add to drawing on your PDF. I'll admit I don't use this much, but I have a tablet laptop. It gives a very nice drawing on your screen with the outside of things and things to look at as something to put together. So I don't use this a lot. When you're done drawing, click on the hand tool again and add that on your new page. Here's the tool for screen capturing. Say you want to capture a bunch of data, or especially a graph that you want to look at later. You can use it as a screen from the application, and if that's what you want, you put it on your clipboard so you can copy it into another document in pen or word. The next tool button is the brainstorm and ending feature. I'm going to leave that last option. Pictures tend to get louder, more advanced features as they tend to be. The next tool button is for finding other documents in your library that cite or reject things. In this case, no other documents are the ones that I have here. Now let's talk about the application options. The first option gives you some page design. The button with the two arms gives you some images side by side. The button with the infinity symbol in green dots to show you more pages. This is helpful if you want to click a certain tab or an annotation. You can see that it is full by view. The button with the three dots names the location. The button with the one on its side shows the page sizes. Next, we have zoom in and zoom out buttons on our devices. The next button is very helpful for navigation as it's long on the paper. Many new PDFs come with section headings that are used to display the table on your iPad. If a PDF has that, click the Your Views button. If the PDF doesn't have it, there's a return link. Quickly go check the Create Form by looking at the section heading. You can use this tool to jump around to different sections of the document. It doesn't work flawless with less than half a word per line. There are also up and down arrows to put an up or down or an alt page. There's a slider bar to choose your page as well. These tools may sound minor, but when you think about how annoying they can be to navigate a really long PDF, you'll see that these can take a lot of time and effort to do. Now we'll turn to the last few buttons that pop up your bar. There's a little video icon that can help quickly scan a small video on this section. There's a save button if you want to save as a copy of your PDF. You already have a copy somewhere, but you may want to grab it. Maybe you want to have a new copy with a new cover so you can store it somewhere else. You can do that easily with this button. There's a friend button for personal buttons. The time icon lets you email and enter in your time. It creates a temporary link to a copy of the document that stores online. The link only works for three days for copyright compliance purposes. So if you send it to someone, you should let them know the link only works for a few days. There is a button to convert your entire PDF to text, which is useful if you need to include new content in a Word document or book. When you click on this button, it will open your default Word program and put the text into your document. You can then save it or copy and paste it from there in the same place. There is a button for listening to an audio version of the text. Finally, there is a negative button that can be helpful with some documents since it can make them easier to read. This button helps us to text a nice, large, shorter body PDF. When it's a big page like this, you want to generate annotation reports from the things you have annotated in your documents. Let's close this document and go back to the main library. The annotation report is created for all the documents in your library. If you have 50 documents, but you only added annotations to half of them, I'll leave the annotations for those five documents to show up in your report. Let's imagine you have 300 documents in your library, and they're on somewhat related subjects, but you don't want an annotation report for all of them. You should put an annotation report for ones that are significant. 
work to preserve social norms, but maybe you just want to take a few breaths and come back to Buddha. Let's review those steps first. Equip the items with one to four root books, go to your chat list, and check your support form. Equip the items with other four research items, enter your search term in the search box, and only the documents with that search term will appear. Pick the first two items that you're relying on to help your first search term next to the right column. Click the right click square where you can select specific documents. The easiest way, I think, is to select the chat box under the title for the documents you want. Another way is to hold the control key while clicking on the documents you want. There are a few other more features listed in the right column. Now that you've picked the documents you want, you can click on the Edit Search and Report button. You will see a pop-up screen where you can change the information about the facts. Let's just use a statement below as an example. Implementation report is generated. At the beginning of the annotation for a document, it lists a brief citation for the document so you can have a copy in your library. Now it is prepared to report. In the couple of comments I wrote on the annotation square, it says what the facts show. Then it shows you the facts and materials, and then it shows you the text and the text format. You can copy this text and paste it into another document if you want. Now that with the items are highlighted, it shows me how to highlight it appears, and it also shows you the outline in the text file. Note too that if I click on the PDF text in the annotation report, it takes me right to that page in the document. I think of the possibilities here. You can mark your PDFs carefully so that when it is time to start writing, you could work from an annotation report instead of looking at the documents themselves. You can print the report or export it to Word. When you close the report, it does not save, so don't worry about it. You can generate a new report at any time with just a click of a button. If you really want to print the report, export it to Word so that you can save a copy in Word. There's one last pop-up form I like, and that is Pages. Now all the information will go there via PDF. To say you want to read the article for one day, you can add in a page. Or you want to print it from your office computer or your home lab or you just want to make darn sure that this information is accessed somewhere. We have several options. In the library view, there are three buttons at the top that I like you to click on. Note that this lists the keys as well. This just syncs the detailed information up to your phone. This is a great way to just back up that work you did if you're otherwise confident that you'll never lose your PDFs. Buddha gives you 200 gigabytes of storage space for free, so the choices on your Windows Explorer project can come with a bit of flexible modeling. We've shown you how it works, but more tools you can use. I'll put the link in the notes. Another option is Save All. This saves a copy of your PDF and a copy of all your metadata, including the annotations and text information that are most compactly affected to the document and your timeline and numbering. Again, Buddha gives you the first 200 gigabytes of storage space for free. If you are printing a large number of documents, like if you're working on a thesis or a number of articles or a book, then you will need to pay a little bit for some extra storage space, but it's really cheap. Personally, I think I made $2 a year and could lack the peace of mind of having a little extra, but if you're still online, it's well worth it. If you want to add money to your account, go to the Home tab. Note that there is a link under the name of your library that says Pop-Up. Place where you can add some money to your account to help with some extra storage space. If you click on that link, it takes you to your online account page where you can pay via PayPal. You might be wondering how much is this going to cost me daily? You'll find it will be nothing until there's a security software or some sort of quick cash if you want one. Here's a demo of some space usage. I have 32 documents in my library for my dissertation and my thesis data. Let's go ahead and add the library as an element. Now we'll view the library online and see how much space we use using the link via our home address. I'll switch to the home tab and click on the view online link under the money number here. Notice that all of my documents are there and there's a link at the right to download the documents. Had I wanted to download them all with a backup, then I wouldn't have quick application for my space. But let me show you the process. I store 500 megabytes of documents for a month, as well as upload and download 100 megabytes of documents. That helps you with the compare to use cost for a month. Adding a huge library of 1.5 gigabytes of documents with 200 megabytes of uploads and downloads will cost you 
already substantially mortgaged. In other words, an initial cost of let's say $5 will really go up by half. As a point of comparison, my library has 32 documents that have all of Zoom 34.4 megabytes of free allotted space. Today, I can look at a library that has a spread of 150 documents that probably not require a library at all. One of the great things about Sequentia is that I can have this same library on more than one computer. So I have documents and annotations of the library that are on my office computer. One of the time I open the library on my laptop, I can click on the refresh library button on the home tab. Quickly will check the online library for new documents and metadata, then download it into the library and have it on. Maybe this time I can back up my Adam Driver drive and have it to the back of my truck. You can back up your entire Quicket library into a zip file. Then you can save that zip file on a long flat external hard drive or any other storage space that you have. Just make sure you have your own hard drive. If it is, go to the Home tab and click on the Backup option. Then you tell Quicket where to save your file. Quicket will save your entire library to that file, which you can then copy somewhere safe. I believe I'm going to do the remote version. If you ever need to use that zip file, you can file secure it. Then you can browse other sites that might have it installed on your computer. Then enter the name of the company, which is Quantico. You can then copy your backup folder into your Quicket folder. That's all I'm going to cover in this tutorial. Quicket has many other features. For more information, visit the Quicket website at quicket.com and check out the Add-on Tutorial to Download Juice Files.